President Trump's very first State of the Union address is just hours away, and we want to take you live to the briefing room in the White House with Deputy Press Secretary Lindsey Walters. Uh, Lindsey, thanks for joining me. Um, a little insight here. How is the president spending his day today ahead of this State of the Union address? Good evening. It's great to be with you. Yesterday and today, the president has done run-throughs. Today, he had the TV anchor luncheon. He also met with his State of the Union guests this afternoon in the Oval Office and is continuing to do run-throughs of the speech up until this evening. All right. And I know he's uh, been speaking with some reporters. We've been seeing some reports on Twitter, uh, a little back and forth there. But um, now, with, uh, with the speech tonight, regardless of party, the economy and infrastructure are two areas where both Republicans and Democrats can uh, agree, and they have agreed. Now talk about the president's approach and the attention to these as he pushes for more unity in 2018. I think you hit the nail on the head there with the unity portion. The president is going to deliver a speech that's unifying tonight. It's going to be a safe, strong, proud America. You're going to hear the president talk about the last year and what he's been able to do to put America front and center on the stage and be able to be prosperous for all American people, whether it be through the tax reform and then as we look forward into real immigration reform and infrastructure reform as well. And you mentioned immigration there, uh, Lindsay. Uh, the president and those around him have had a chance now to gauge the initial reaction from lawmakers on both sides of the aisle when it comes to the White House's immigration plan that was released, of course, last week. Um, leaked out a little bit by John Kelly, the chief of staff, while the president was in Davos. But uh, can we expect any big or even small changes to that initial plan uh, to be delivered tonight during the speech based on the reaction that the president has seen since last week's release? Well, what you saw last week was the president's framework on immigration that was delivered by the White House on Friday. Obviously, we'll continue to build on that framework as we do reach across the aisle and try to come to a bipartisan agreement on real immigration reform moving forward. Tonight's speech is going to be on unifying the country. And again, it's going to be regarding a safe, strong, proud America as we move forward into the second year of his presidency. Well, will the president be talking about health care at all? That's one of the I know that, uh, you know, he's got his five pillars that uh, he wants to hit in the State of the Union tonight. But uh, what about health care and what's in store for health care in 2018? Will he touch on that at all? I think your main focus you're going to see are immigration and infrastructure. Obviously, there is the opioid crisis that has riddled America. One of the guests this evening is the police officer who's a proud parent of an adopted opioid baby who will be sitting in the first lady's box. So the president is constantly reaching out and talking to the American people about opioids and what we need to do to fix this problem. Okay, and Lindsay, there are about, uh, I think there, the count is 12 now, uh, Democrat uh, Congress men and women who will not be attending tonight as uh, sort of a protest as they see it. Um, so there are some folks that won't be attending tonight, but what's the president's overall message to those who will be in the crowd regarding uh, another looming government shutdown? Because be it defense spending or fixing, fixing immigration, what's the approach tonight? You know, we started this interview with the word unity. Um, you know, how does he bring people going forward? February 8th, potential shutdown. What are we looking at tonight from the president? The president has been very clear in regards to the shutdown that it's irresponsible to hold our government hostage and funding for our troops over immigration. He's made it clear that he's willing to come to the table to discuss these topics, to come to a real immigration reform that both parties support. We've laid out our framework and we're hopeful that the Democrats will get on board and that they won't pull another senseless act like they did a week ago and hold the government and our military funding hostage over something that we all want to come to a common ground on and we cannot do while the government is shut down. We need to have an open line of communication, which is what the White House has pushed forward for. And so I think tonight the president's going to focus on the last year, the unity moving forward and the fact that if we come together and we can work towards a real immigration reform and infrastructure reform, it's better for all American people. It's better that there was a tax reform and that Americans are seeing more come home in their paycheck than in the situation they were prior. And so we need to put aside our differences and push forward for what's in the best interest of the American people, whether you're a Republican or you're a Democrat. All right, before I let you go, Lindsay, anything on a potential trip to San Diego to examine those eight prototype uh, walls that's down there? Is there anything on the schedule? I know West Virginia Virginia is Thursday. What else? 
I don't want to get ahead of what's on the president's schedule. We've obviously outlined this week what's on his schedule, and there is not that trip planned for this week. As for later down the road, I'll let the schedule speak for itself as it comes out, and we'll get ahead of that surprise. All right. Well, uh, someone you know very well, I'm sure Jason Miller today uh, said that uh, uh, the president is a little bit like Tom Brady before these big speeches. He, he just shows up for these big games, so to speak. So uh, we will uh, be tuning in tonight. White House Deputy Press Secretary Lindsey Walters, thank you as always. Thank you. We can use your help. Call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call today.